me and Red Auerbach and Jeff Swift, the PR, longtime PR guy here with the Celtics, set it up for me. Uh, and he brought me into Red's office, and Red was smoking a cigar, and it was like one of the greatest uh, opportunities for me to be able to talk to Red Auerbach. And it, to be honest with you, Fred, I don't even remember what the heck I asked him. It was just more of having the opportunity to sit down with him and chat for about 15, 20 minutes to play back on at BZ Radio uh, years and years and years ago. So it was a, a highlight for me right up there with uh, interviewing Ted Williams, uh, you know, those kind of guys that you, uh, you, know, you hear so much about, know so much about, uh, but having the opportunity to talk to him was a thrill for me. So, yeah, I, I posted that this morning because my wife said to me, and I'm like, that was kind of cool, you know what I mean? But, yeah, oh, my sweater cool. is ugly, and I'm very young looking, but well, I do have gray hair. I had gray hair back in high school, so yeah, it's been, it, a, it, been a while. But you kept it, and it's a beautiful head of it. So when, when you're talking to those to a guy like Arbach, how, how you've been around Boston sports for so long, so it's a time to reflect, right, because – uh, you know, it, it's a victory parade today and an 18th championship and a, a, a team's got more championship than anyone else unless you want to cheat and count the Minneapolis Lakers, which uh, have, have no uh, affiliation with the uh, with the Los Lakers, Angeles Lakers. Yeah, they have 12 in L.A. and 5 in Minneapolis. Yeah, and those were before uh, people could walk, really. And so uh, what – what how – when, when Arbuck was in, in charge and, you know, and to now – uh, things have, how much have things changed? I mean, it's a, it's a totally different situation. I know they practiced in a dump in Bright, in Brighton, Hellenic College, Hellenic College, and you know Arbach was the the man about town. Like, how much have things changed? Well, yeah, Fred. Back then, I was I was working for Kurt Gowdy's radio stations uh, up in Lawrence, uh, and I was able to go to a lot of these different games and events and things like that. And I remember going to Hellenic College. And it was so casual, you know what I mean? They'd be sitting. I remember Kevin McHale and you know Bird and those guys just sitting on the like kind of the remember like at the Catholic schools, the, the the old gymnasiums where it was the cafeteria as well, and there was no room to play basketball in. If you once you once you put the ball up and in, it was a stage. Yeah, right I've been to there. Hellenic College. Yeah, I, uh, just yeah. real quickly, I, and then I want you to tell your story. I my son had a camp at Hellenic College, and I went. Why the hell is there a camp here? It's a dump. I came on the air next day and said I was my son was at a school in Brighton. It's a dump, and then uh, John said that's weird. The Celtics used to practice around there, and I go, "What was it?" He goes, "Hellenic College." I go, "That's where my son was." <laughs> so I know <laughs> for people who don't know, you go, "Fred, oh, you're so cynical and you're such an a hole," which is all true. Yeah. But I'm telling you, Hellenic College. If your kid was playing basketball, with there's their, a stage you know, what's on going one on? side of the gym. There's a legit stage where you put on a play on one side of the gym. Yes, and and that's that's the atmosphere. That's what I what I said. So I, I was lucky enough to start right, right, while I was going to Syracuse at this radio station in Lawrence that Kirk Audi owned forever, and that was like in the mid '80s, right around '83, '84. So I would just go in with my you know radio, uh, my tape recorder, and my my mic and that and you'd be able to talk to anybody and i you know i was in the locker room after they beat the houston rockets to win an nba championship and you're larry bird and all those guys it was so there were so fewer media back then that it was much more accessible easy those guys were just easy to talk to they were fun so yeah all those guys it was just like a thrill for me to be able to do that talk to a guy like that and then years later set up something with ted williams on the radio sounded like I was interviewing John Wayne, the old actor, because of his, uh, his, his, you know, just his booming voice and things like that. So those are the things that you look back on and remember. And now with my wife sending that, I looked back on this and said, you know, I think this is my 13th parade somewhere around there uh, covering maybe more. But it's like uh, one of those things you don't take for granted when you step out here. So you can feel the atmosphere. You can feel the electricity as these guys are ready to step on duck boats. And the coolest thing for me in these situations is, uh, you have no idea. None of these players have any idea. And you guys know this. What it's like to go through the city in a duck boat on a parade, and they, you can say it to someone. You can talk about it. You know, I had the privilege of being on with uh, uh, Kapler, Trot, Nixon, Veritek, and Mirabelli in the 2004 parade, being on a boat with them, being in the water, and just seeing thousands and thousands of people on the Charles. And when you say to them, "What do you think? Oh, it'll be fun," blah blah blah. When they come back from it, they're like, "Holy!" smokes it sets in like it really sets in that you won a world championship which is 
it's going to be cool for this group to watch them do that. So looking forward to that today. Yeah, it's amazing. It, it, they asked me for because the, they were doing 15th anniversary of the Sports Hub interviews, and they're like, what was the biggest thing at the Sports Hub? And I say, being the two, I had no business being in it, and the only reason I was in it is the station had a couple slots, and management was cool enough to put me on it. But I was in the 2011 parade, and, and, and even though no one was there to see me, I mean, just, I mean, that, that parade was insane. That that was over well over a million people, and I have video of it, and I showed it to my daughter, and she was not impressed at all. And I said, what did you think this was going to look like? How could this have been better for you, Zoe? Like, like, like what, what? what would it take to make an impression on you one way or the other? Your dad on a duck boat going through the streets of downtown Boston in front of millions of people and them losing their minds. She nah, goes, doesn't move the needle. She goes, are you, are you going to go to the Celtics parade? I go, no. And she goes, uh, Mom asked me if I wanted to go, but I don't want to go. And I go, and she goes, were you ever in one? And she asked. And I said, I was in one. And I go, it was awesome. And I'm like, do you want to see a video of it? I, two, I just go 2011 on my phone. I have videos of it. And there's a video already of... Me pan, it's not even, I'm like, I'm not showing my face in it like an a-hole, but I'm like panning around the the crowd and I'm telling you, not exaggerating, 40 deep on the street. And she's like, yeah, she like took her eyes off the phone. It's a f- well, 30 second video. Like, did. like you can't, what, wait, what did you think? It was, you asked to see it. What, yeah. what did you think it was going to look like? My goodness. I'm with you though. I told Forsberg the same thing. I'm a very I, people. I'm being serious. It's it's a, it's a tremendous experience, and, and for even players who play in arenas and stadiums, it's still insane. The city yeah. closed down for you, you know, thirty people deep for a mile. It's crazy, and yeah, I think that the sea of people everywhere, Fred. And the, and the cool thing I remember coming out of Fenway Park for, on that duck boat is exactly uh, Joe Giza found an old tape that I had, I had shot by myself uh, video. And being on the duck boat, and the first thing you see is two guys just as you enter the street, as you come through Fenway Park and out to the street, there's one guy standing there and saying, yelling at Trot, saying, now I can die in peace. Now I can die in peace. And it's like, and then he Trot ate showed a that to his kids. <laughs> Trot showed that to his kids who are both playing, or played in the College World Series this year with NC State. But he showed them to his kids, and his kids were like, yeah, oh, that's great. That's really cool. You know oh, what I mean? It's just like geez. that same type of reaction. But you, you don't understand that. And the cool thing, though, that if you want to take the, the other side of this, too, is there's a lot of kids growing up here that, yes, it's only been six years or whatever since the parade, but they'll experience, they'll get a feeling in this city, if, you, if they go to the parade, what it's like to win a world championship in this city. So at least for a lot of them people that are in high school now and maybe college, that they get to experience that, which is kind of cool today as well. So, Dan, I I wanted to tell you this because I know you question my parenting uh, skills because I've never taken my kids to Disney. But uh, my daughter uh, just last night informed us she wanted to go to the parade, and my wife and I talked about it. We're like, ah, back and forth. Because she also wanted to go to the St. Patrick's Day parade in Southie. We're like, no, you're not doing that. No. Yeah, we'll be we'll be the mean parents that say no. But for this one, I was on her side. I'm like, yeah, I think you should go. It's an experience. You and your friends should be able to experience this today. And I, I supported well, her in that endeavor. And I think you would approve of that, Dan. Well, the other thing I approved of, too, to, to hear you say, Hardy, now you know why I, I do and why I love what I do e- even more so is the way you talked about your friends, your best friend's uh, son winning a high school state championship and how cool it was out in Michigan. Yeah. That's what I love. I mean, it still comes down to the games, right? People say, oh, you know, what do you love about your job? It's the games. Watching the games and watching the emotion and watching the, the feeling. It, you know, being in Dallas, seeing the Celtics get blown out and everyone start to question them back the other way after so many impressive outings that they had. And then being here when they won the world championship, even on the high school level, I still think it's cool to watch the kids experience that or college in the, in the bean pot and things like that. That's what I love. I love the games. And that's that's why I continue to do what I do and, and love with a passion what I do because you get events, you get things like that and the emotion. And to hear you say that about your friend uh, playing at Michigan State or what have you uh, was really, really cool. Uh, all right, what, what's going on down there? Where are you camped out and, and is it getting crowded? What's going on? I have the, the wonderful job, <laughs> excuse me, the wonderful job today of 
I'm here now. The duck boats are out in front. Uh, going inside to watch the, the little half-hour ceremony that's starting at 10 o'clock. Uh, we're going to be on BZTV starting at 10 a.m. So after we're done that, I come outside here, and I am what they call the pool reporter that has to interview or try to get interviews with the players as they get on board the duck boats here for all the TV stations. And then after that, Max, uh, Civic Maxwell and I are walking across the street to our podium, and Max and I will be part of our parade coverage uh, on BZ from 10 to one thirty, two o'clock, whenever we're on till 3 o'clock. We'll be doing that, and then when the parade's over, I come back here and try to get drunk guys to talk to me about how great the parade was. So I become Adolfo. I become Nick at that point in my uh, <laughs> oh, in my life. Oh, you're so fun. lucky to be oh, like Nicholas. That's a privilege, my friend. <laughs> oh, sweet Nicholas, just don't don't let your heart get the best of you and end up passed out in a bed covered in your own poo. <laughs> I'm not fearful of that because I have to do the five and the six. I have right. to anchor back at the station, so I'm not worried about that part. Where will you defecate during the parade if you have to go potty? No, I'm just kidding. All right, Dan Roach, <laughs> WBZ Television is going to have all your parade coverage. He's the best. Danny, we love you. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon. Right. Love you too, fellas. If you like that clip, check out more videos from Toucher and Hardy here. For more Celtics analysis and opinion, hit this playlist. And for all the latest from the Sports Hub, download the app at 98.5thesportshub.com.